What's up guys? It's Carly from Fast Native English where if you are finally ready to take your English to another level and to begin speaking English like a native English speaker, then you've come to the right place. So let's get into it. What's up YouTube? I have another slang term for you all today and today's slang term is cringe cringe all right but what does cringe mean cringe is just something that's so embarrassing awkward etc as to cause one to actually cringe so the word cringe is a real word and you can find it in the dictionary but we kind of made this into a slang term as well because a lot of times when you use the word cringe it's like a feeling or sensation that you have you're like oh you know, I read that murder mystery book and the things that that serial killer did made me cringe. It made me feel like a certain way, you know, I cringed. But we made it into a slang term where we say Ugh, cringe, meaning something's like embarrassing or awkward and we think about it or we remember it or maybe it happens. We're just like, this is so cringe. You know, it's kind of like a slang that we have made up. I don't know who made it up, but it's become popular the past couple of years. All right. So of course I have a story for you all today. So my story is when I was a senior in high school, I went to study abroad in Japan for a little bit. And when I was in Japan, I fell in love with Japanese fashion. Like I had two or three really close Japanese friends who were actually exchange students at my high school in America. And then I became really close friends with them. And then when I went to Japan, of course, I hung out with them. I lived with one of them when I was there and then the other ones I met up with and I hung out with them. And all three of them were very fashionable and they loved fashion. And it really got me interested in Japanese fashion. I really wanted to like dress like a cute little Japanese girl. only caveat was that I was not a cute little Japanese girl. All right. I was very much white American. Not so cute. This is my senior year of high school. You guys like I, I, I got cuter as I aged and then I kind of peaked and then now I'm just like, eh. you know, so I was not that cute my senior year of high school. Um, to say the least, I was just okay. I think in my opinion. So I loved fashion and I wanted to learn more of Japanese fashion and I wanted to dress more in that sense, like Japanese fashion wise. There was this type of Japanese fashion that I forgot the term of it, I forgot the name of it, but it was like, basically you wore like a bunch of layers, a bunch of necklaces, like a bunch of hair clips, you tanned your skin, you put a bunch of highlighter on your face and you wore like bows and nothing really matched but then everything kind of looked cute at the same time that was like a fashion trend back in 2009 when i was in japan and i really loved it and one of my close friends she wore that kind of style and i wanted to have that style too so she took me to this like clothing store in japan that had a, a lot of that fashion but like plus size because dude if you are an american size medium here in america even a medium like a normal average American girl, then you are plus size in Japan. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. Hate to break it to you, that's just how it is. For me, I was like plus, 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 plus size in Japan because I'm like a, you know, I'm like go over there and I'm like, all right, I'm like a large, extra large in America. And then I go to Japan and they're like, you're a six X. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. Um, so my friend took me to this like plus size store um, in Japan that had that kind of fashion and I just went crazy. Like I blacked out and I just like spent all my money in that store. <gasps> Put it in the cart. And I bought so many things, so much so that I had to buy an extra suitcase to come back to America to bring all the stuff that I bought basically in that store. Like I couldn't buy a lot of things in Japan because a lot of times it was hard for me to find my size. But when I went to this plus size store, I was like, I can buy everything, I can fit everything. So I spent so much money and then I 
came back to America. Also, I bought like a lot of Japanese makeup and like accessories and everything like that. So I came back to America and I started dressing just like how I learned in Japan, like from my friends and, and stuff, how I learned how to dress. So I came back to America, started dressing like that. And I thought I was cool. <laughs> that's hot, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot. I really did. I was like, oh my goodness. Like I'm so fashionable. Nobody even knows this fashion because this is Japanese fashion. All these white people here, all these Americans, all my friends, they don't know. You know, I'm the cool one and they're not. That's kind of how I felt because like I was a teenager and I was dumb. But reality, looking back on it now, very cringe. Very much so cringe. I literally, <laughs> oh, so embarrassing. I used to, you know, I bought a lot of Japanese makeup. So I used to wear like my Japanese makeup and it was so much light for, lighter for my skin because Japanese makeup tends to have a whitening serum in it. So it makes you a little bit whiter than you already are. Korean makeup does it a lot too. So I had to be careful when I was living in Korea. I had to like read the ingredients and make sure if I buy Korean makeup, it wasn't gonna make my skin whiter. Cause sometimes it's like a cream that makes it temporarily white. And sometimes it's like, no, like, this is like a serum that will actually make your skin white. You have to be careful when you're reading that. But when I was in Japan, I bought this makeup that was way too light for my skin. And then I bought like super, super pink blush and like glitter for my eyes and like huge bows for my hair and like clips. And like, I had like this necklace that had a lollipop on it or like some type of candy on it that I bought in Japan. It was all blinged out. And I just thought like that was like the most amazing piece of jewelry. I used to wear it with everything. I bought me pink leather Nike Air Forces. I know, right? In Japan. And I was like, oh, this is so freaking cool. You know, like I thought I was so cool. I would put, I would wear those with everything and nothing would match. Like my, my rope, my big bow was like red. And then I would have like my super, pink cheeks and like my white skin and then glitter underneath here and like i would do like what is it called in english in korean it's called egg yourself and in english i don't think we really have a word for it you know here i am the english teacher i don't think we have a word for it but it's where you do your makeup i kind of still do it a little bit but it's like you do your makeup sparkly right underneath and then you like contour a lot to make it look like a little puff right here it's very common in like asian makeup routines to see this right here be sparkly and then like a contour to make it a little bit puffy so i used to do that but like extreme like i would use like a white eyeliner pencil mark all up under my eye in white and then like draw a dark line so it makes my eyes look even bigger because japanese girls used to do that even though i'm not japanese even though i don't need my eyes to look any bigger because my eyes already are freaking huge I used to do that. I used to do that all the time. And so I basically looked like a clown. But nobody told me. Actually, maybe my mom told me, but I didn't listen. I was like, mom, it's fashion. Like, stop, leave me alone, you know? But maybe I should have listened to her because now that I think about it, it's very much cringe. I don't like to think about that time in my life. I loved being in Japan and I loved the culture experience that I got. And I love shopping in Japan. I love Japanese fashion. And I, if I would have put my clothes onto a Japanese person, it would have probably looked so cute. But because it was me, because I was an overweight, overweight white girl living in America, I didn't fit in. I stood out and not in a good way. I stood out very awkwardly. So it's embarrassing to think about one of my cringiest times in my life. And whenever somebody brings it up, like if a friend, even a few weeks ago, one of my friends brought it up in passing, I was like, oh, like I remember you used to have this like um, bow from Tokyo Disneyland. And I'm like, shh, 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 No, that time does not exist in my life anymore. I have blocked it out. It was so cringe that I no longer think about it. Please stop talking. That was not me. You know, like insert the little clip here that's not me that's patricia like that's exactly how i felt like that wasn't me i don't know who that girl was please stop talking let's move forward all right no looking in the past too much cringe back there move forward all right so i hope you guys have a better understanding of this slang term cringe if you do please like comment and subscribe and i hope to see you all in the next video